Welcome to Cinemascope. In this special edition, we come to you from the 54th Melbourne International Film Festival and put you in the picture with some unique features soon to hit cinemas. We also catch up with some big name stars at the world premiere of a much talked about Aussie drama and give you the chance to grab some double passes to a hot new martial arts movie. But first, here's Renee Brack. The Underworld has always been a popular backdrop for feature films and our next guest was on top of the world when his hotly controversial feature made it to the big screen. Why were you gone? I was in prison. What did you do? Under the City bravely shines a light on underage prostitution in Chicago's top hotels. It's the first feature for both American writer-director Adam Gollum and Melbourne-born Dean Rebayov, who stars in the lead role and was producer as well. The independent crime drama, which received some of its finance from Melbourne, was made for a mere 60,000 US dollars and attracted Hollywood actors John Hurd, Mike Starr and the Sopranos Richard Portnell, all of whom worked for free. On paper, on a record as far as I can tell. Adam and Dean are former attorneys who informally met in Chicago. We met at a boxing gym about four years ago. We pretty much met in the ring, two guys just beating each other up <laughs> and became, uh, you know, the closest of friends. That's also where we met Richard. Let go. He's, uh, you know, all the guy, but he still likes to hit the bag. And he knew what Adam was doing with the script. And he finally asked Adam to read it. And that's how that began as well. Anyone else comes in, my daughter, you hit the ground, you never get up. You understand? It's about a guy who's about nine months out of prison and trying to get his life back on track. The only problem is the guys that put him in there, the corrupt cop, in the seedy life of Chicago are now back on his tail wanting him to work for them again. And he has no choice because they have an unsolved murder which they could pin on him and he goes back to jail for life. It's not what I am. You can't separate it. You're wrong! Explain to me some of the research you did and how that impacted on the film. Adam conducted interviews with the people in the know from guys at hotels, doormen who were, who were really the wealth of information. In Chicago, every building has a doorman on it, like an apartment or a, uh, a hotel, you know. They're the ones that will tell you every single fact that's going on in that city and in that hotel. Now you listen to this, if I don't get that delivery, then I gotta come up with a suitable substitute. It took him about two years to really hone that script and shopped it around for a while around Los Angeles. Got some great interest from Robert Redford's company, the guys who did Cold Mountain. But people can like it, but when they have to put the money up, that's, you know, the next level. It sat for about nine months until the two of us realized that no one else is going to give us a job. So we pulled it out of his drawer and uh, we made a commitment to make it. And within like five months, we had turned around and started production. I'm crazy, huh? I'm crazy. You're here at two in the morning with an ex-con you don't even know. And it's one thing to show something to someone and have them go, wow, I want to do it. But how did you get them on board and how did you get them to work for free? You have to be honest with people. $60,000, we had to tell people, we need, look, we need your help. We need a favor. We need your restaurant for free. We can't pay you $20,000 for the day. And people, for some reason, they just gravitated to it. I think people were just really committed to telling a, a good story. I'm just here until Mix fixes my problem. You got a lot of faith, brother. <laughs> 